Welcome to the Hiring and Empowering Solutions podcast. This podcast is dedicated to providing the key ingredients to transform your employees into a dream team, creating consistent results in every aspect of your business, including your people, your process, and your profits, your team empowerment, leadership, business development, communication, hiring, and firing. As some of the country's leading staffing and management consultants, we help business owners i.e. entrepreneurs, and the team that support them, what we call intrapreneurs, to powerfully connect and work together to grow the business. Today we are talking about your role and the truth about your role in your law firm. And I'm so excited for this conversation because I am, this is piggybacking as always off of multiple phone calls, emails, comments on previous podcasts that I've recorded, um, my coaching conversations that I'm having, conversations I'm having from folks that are struggling with hiring, firing, et cetera. And this podcast is for you as the attorney the business owner, the entrepreneur, in addition to your role as the employee, and then lastly, your role as a leader in the firm. If you are serving as the PLA, the COO, CEO, office manager, team leader, whatever term you are coined with in your quote-unquote job description. So let's start at the top because that's where it starts. So go the attorney, so go the rest of the firm. So very simply, if you are an attorney in the firm and you, whether you own it or you're an associate or what have you, it starts with the owner. So the behaviors of the owner, the founder, the habits of the owner and the founder uh, is modeled consciously, subconsciously, what have you, by the rest of the people in the firm. And that's just the the bloody truth of it all. So if you are the owner of the firm and you're also serving in the role as an attorney, meaning that you owe the file, you owe the calendar, you owe the client, and you are not keeping your promises and keeping your word and honoring your big rocks for the week and honoring your calendar, then you cannot be upset when your employees don't follow through, when they miss deadlines, they do not over communicate with clients, et cetera. Because if you have not followed Gary V um, on any of his phenomenal YouTube or Instagram or LinkedIn posts, I highly recommend that you follow him. And one of the conversations he is constantly screaming from the rooftops is when attorneys or entrepreneurs will say, that, you know, my employees don't care as much as I do. And it's true. They will never care as much as you do. I believe the second piece of that statement is until your behaviors communicate that you care as much as you want them to care. So I get phone calls. I'm not kidding you all. I'm not exaggerating when I say daily and I get texts daily. Just yesterday alone, I got three separate texts from people that said, hey, can I contact you for a confidential conversation? Can we have an off the record conversation? And these are texts that are coming from employees. And when I get on the phone with them, 100% of the time, the conversation starts, I don't know what to do. My attorney ditches my meetings. My attorney doesn't respond to my emails. My attorney isn't meeting their deadlines. And we're always operating from a place of hair on fire. And then it causes this domino effect of mistakes. So if you are an attorney that is not keeping your word with your employees, how in the world can you get up? That when you are uh, your employees are not returning clients' phone calls, when your employees have missed a deadline, or when your employees possibly have mistakes within their documents, and you're cons- consistently seeing that, you have to start with you. So the truth about your role in the law firm attorneys is that you have got to be disciplined as hell 
in regards to meeting your deadlines because everybody's behavior is modeling yours, period, end of story. So when you are not replying to your employees' emails, the message you are sending to them was, hey, I'm not worried about it. I don't care if we don't get back to the client. So how in the world can you expect them to get back to them and be upset with them when they don't get back to clients? Take a hard look at your behaviors right now, attorney. I get it. A lot of times I don't want to sit in all these meetings. No, I don't want to sit with Susie and review files. When I see that Timmy's on my calendar, I'm like, oh, God, we got to go talk about probate again. I'd rather shoot myself, you know, than go and do that. I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, go golfing or whatever it might be. You have to really take a long, hard look in your mirror. Now, you might not like your role today. You're like, I just want an associate to free me up from all this. Okay, I get it. And absolutely will take an unwavering stand for you to have that. However, you have to get the behaviors and model it and, and start introducing this in your law firm. And then your employees will absolutely positively follow suit. So as the owner, as the entrepreneur, as an attorney, whether you're the associate or your name's on the wall or you are going to be the succession planning for your attorney, and here's the deal, even if you didn't have the conversation about you potentially being the succession planning for the attorney, now it's time for you to rise above and step up your game and up-level your game. If you are an associate and see what you can do to take things off of the primary attorney's plate so you can demonstrate this. If you're an associate and you're seeing you're constantly waiting on your quote unquote boss or the founder or the head attorney within your firm, or you're constantly, whether you're an associate W2, independent contractor, I, it doesn't matter. The uh, model is the same. Sit down with your attorney. You all know, and even if you're an employee, you all know when they're ditching appointments. You know when they're not returning your uh, emails or they're not showing up for your daily huddles or what have you, or you're not getting the information that you need. Speak into their listening in a way that makes a difference for them. And this is your role, employee, kind of transitioning into that now. This is the truth about your role in the law firm. Your attorneys, your bosses, your supervisors are desperate and dependent on you to come to them with the truth. So finding a way, now again, it's all in delivery. Your intentions are well, it's all in your delivery of how you communicate to that to them. And sitting down with them and say, listen, I get it and I understand your high quick start or whatever their Colby is, speak into their Colby uh, or their strength finder or their disc that you know about them. So speak into their listening. This is not your favorite thing. What can I do to make this easier on you to get the information I need to service the clients? You're ditching our meetings. I'm noticing it that other people are starting. There's a trickle-down effect within the firm. I need the information. You know, you'll miss my meeting to review files, but then in the same token, send me an email or, you know, client services or whomever, the law firm PLA will send me an email saying, hey, the Smiths called again, and you still haven't returned their phone call. And now they're, they're hair on fire, upset. Well, yeah, I haven't returned their phone call because the attorney ditched my meeting and I didn't get the information or the attorney still has the doc sitting on their hard drive or their desk or wherever it might be. So I can't move forward. I'm at a stopping point right now. So if you're at a place where you're frustrated that you own a job as an attorney, that you're constantly owing the file, you're frustrated that your team constant complaints that people aren't returning phone calls or we don't know the state of the union or we're not adding notes to the CRM, whatever it might be. Now is the time for you all to do a stop, drop and roll and almost do like a, um, a full review of of each other and seeing where you're at. 
so often people will do these cool business exercises like what is my unique ability, which I love from Strategic Coach, but it's talking about your skill sets. It's talking about your knowledge. It's talking about your attributes, what have you. How about you do a really great exercise in your next meeting, your team meeting, your next strategic retreat, or even carve out a mini workshop for 90 minutes on a Monday or Friday where you all can do this analysis and really looking at of what role am I playing in the firm's success right now that I am a bottleneck. So where am I a bottleneck? Where do you see me as a bottleneck? Or maybe that you are not clear on how to communicate with me in regards to get what you need to get your job done. And don't use it as a weapon against against someone because your role as the attorney is to model the behavior that you want to see standardized throughout your entire practice. And I'm not trying to, you know, call you all on the carpet and, and, and beat you with the wet noodle, so to speak. But by the same token, you have to take a look in the mirror first. And you have to do hard things that you don't want to do, such as meet and do file review, such as return email. So if email's not working for you, then find another way. Say, don't send me emails. That's your question. Come to me with the daily huddle. I don't love them, but the reason I don't love them, so again, this goes to you, employees, is because you don't show up prepared or you're coming to me with constant problems and no solutions, employees. So I will, I'm making a commitment here. I'm not going to ditch those meetings anymore. However, they can, cannot last more than 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Let's start with 30 minutes and then the goal is we get to 15 minutes in 30 days. But you have to show up prepared. You have to be very bullet point with your information and you have to be very clear and concise with your communication of here's where I'm jammed up and here's what I think I should do. Tell me where I'm right or wrong. Boom. Next file. Okay, boom. I'm going to call the Smiths. This is what I think I should say to them. What am I missing? Are you okay with this language? Are you okay with this verbiage? Do you want me to call them? Do you want me to email them? And as much as you can possibly show up, because the reason attorneys ditch meetings or the reasons that attorneys are um, not reviewing files, not replying to emails, what have you, is there's something you're doing on your side of it as well that's causing them to either shut down, go into overwhelm, because I don't know, maybe you're sending a four point paragraph email and they can't even get past sentence one because it's, it will take them a half hour to read this thing and to get out their secret decoder and figure out what the heck you even want. So it's a two way street. Everybody plays a role in the truth of what's going on. So the sooner you can have the clear, courageous conversations about this, because in my experience, it's that you're not speaking into someone's listening for them to be able to take action. So the way that you like to give information is possibly, probably not the way that they like to receive information. And so getting really clear on that of what's not working And what can we do to create that win-win? Sometimes there is a point where you say, okay, I need a lot of detail. Or in the beginning, I'm going to have to go into extreme detail. But as much as you can pay attention of where and facilitate the conversation attorney to get what you need, you don't have to sit in there and just take it and listen to me habber jabber forever when you're like, just get to the point. Say what you need and speak into what you need to get what you need so you can get out of there quicker. And then ultimately you can service the client, service the file, and that is how you grow. That is how you optimize. That is how you scale a practice. And in addition, that is how you get your freedom as an entrepreneur. That is how you get your freedom as an employee. Maybe right now you do have to suck it up and you have to be, the wear three hats within the firm. Is that ideal long-term? No, but the only way out is through. 
And the only way through is when you have consistent communication and you're meeting and truly treating it like that locker room huddle and and t- being responsible for your role in that meeting in that interaction with that file and flat out just stopping if somebody's going way too deep in the weeds and you're starting to brown out because you're going to start ditching their meetings you're going to start avoiding them you're not going to want to meet with them what have you but that that translates to the employee that you don't if you don't care about them then how in the world do you care about the client which is not the truth. It's just that however you're getting the information is not working for you. So therefore, you'd rather just bury your head in the sand and avoid it and hope that they figure it out. But then the employee, the message that's being sent to them is that, well, if the attorney doesn't care, then I don't care. They're fully aware I need help on this and they're not responding to it. So I'm going to put it at the bottom of the pile and do nothing until they respond to it. But the attorney's getting hammered with 50 other, from 40 other different directions, requests from them, from other employees, from referral sources, from existing clients, prospective clients, the listservs, and everything else that they have coming at them 24-7, at seven days, you know, all the time. It's, we all have to really get clear on what our role is. So an exercise for you as a firm is to do that review and sit down and really get deeply curious about it, be open about it, not um, combative about it or defensive about it, and getting clear of what's not working in my role right now from your perspective in this firm and give everybody an opportunity for that right down to the receptionist. So this goes for the managing attorney, associate attorneys. It goes for the receptionist, client services, the production team, the paralegals, law clerks, what have you, and having this deeply curious, open conversation so we can get to the truth about each of your roles in the firm. I'm not talking about job descriptions. I'm talking about the breakdown in process. I'm talking about the breakdown in communication. I'm talking about the breakdown in production, which ultimately 100% impacts the breakdown in profitability. For some of you, it might be even just for revenue generation. Heck, we can't even have a conversation about profitability. We're just about surviving here. We're just about knowing our monthly nut and being able to cover it. And it's not about a bigger, better marketing plan. It's not about a bigger, better, stronger business plan or strategic roadmap or any of that stuff. In my experience, you really, truly, I have seen firms make money hand over fist, double their revenue, 10x their revenue, what have you, without all of that because of their ability to get truthful and honest and consistently measuring that every single week in their weekly stakeholder meetings, team meetings, whatever the terminology you use for identifying these meetings of where the bottleneck is. If you consistently show up on your weekly meetings and saying that you are not getting to your billing, that you are not getting to working on um, client matters to be able to close them and then be able to uh, collect the check. You're not consistently not able to get to that presentation or you're consistently not able to launch your Facebook ads or whatever it is to move things forward in the name of growth, in the name of opportunity, in the name of revenue, in the name of being an entrepreneur and a business owner. And we after week after week, if you still are not getting to these things and, and your team knows it and you're saying out loud, then the message that you are sending is, hey, it's super okay if you want to keep ditching the things that you have as your big rocks on your weekly um, priority list. It's okay if you want to consistently keep putting this off and keep saying, I didn't have enough time. Because 
I don't have enough time is a translation of I don't want to do it or I really don't care about doing it. And I know that stings a bit, but it's tr the truth. So the next time you catch yourself saying, I didn't have time, I ran out of time, there wasn't enough time. I want you to eradicate that and be really honest and truthful and replace that with, I didn't care enough to, to pull an all-nighter to get this done. I didn't care enough to stay until 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock on Tuesday night to get this done and get really truthful about why you didn't care enough to do it. I didn't review those documents, and now the client is pulling into the parking lot, and the whole firm is on here on fire. But the truth of why I didn't do that, even though I have time in my time template every Monday to do it, is because I don't want to do it anymore. It sucks the life out of me. Well, great. Now we have the truth. Let's go ahead and hire a contract attorney, an associate attorney, what have you. Don't worry about where the money is going to come from. Once you do that, it automatically causes you to up level because you no longer have any excuses or that energetic backpack that is weighing you down. It's all, you've got nothing but freedom to be able to up level yourself. So let us know how you do. We want to hear from you. Thank you to all of our listeners that consistently send me feedback about these podcasts. And a lot of times my topics come from the feedback that we get. Can you record a podcast on and give me the feedback? Or you'll give me a really nice email that will tell me what you took away from this podcast, which will always give me indications of where I can really um, bring this conversation to another level, to a higher level, or some other different missing pieces that I didn't speak into from the employee's perspective or from the attorney's perspective. So your comments, your feedback, your text messages, your emails, your voicemails to me, whatever, I want to hear from you all day, every day, client, not client, exist, you know, an employee, a uh, independent contractor, whoever you are listening to this, please, we want your feedback so we can really make certain that we can create a groundswell, that we can do some needle moving work and we can continue to speak into this conversation to get you the breakthrough that you're craving to be able to up level your practice and get the financial, the energetic, and the time freedom that you so deserve. Okay, until next time, talk to us. Give us your comments. Give us your feedback. If you're a first-time listener, check us out at hiringandempowering.com. Opt into our blog, into our podcast, and make certain that you get this dropped into your email. We drop a new podcast every Tuesday and a um, new blog just chock full of tips, techniques, and tools every Thursday. Thank you for listening. Until next time, this has been another episode of Hiring and Empowering Solutions.